We'll start with that. Almost forgot. And that. Got a little case. Ugh. Final Cut Express. Oh. Okay, I guess we're fucked now. Okay, I'm gonna have to mute this part due to copyright. Hey guys, we have a fantastic trip down memory lane planned for today's Crazy Ken's Tech Misadventures episode. However, you really don't want to be stupid like me. And how can we fix that? With education. I bet you're watching this video right now on a website or mobile app. Well, guess what? A lot of industries rely on those technologies. So why not consider a career in one of them or both? Full Sail University offers undergraduate degree programs in software development, website development, and mobile apps. You will receive a laptop and you will be using the same tools that professionals use. To learn more about these great programs, please visit this link that is available in the description. Greetings, Internet! Crazy Ken is back at it again today, and today, whoa, we got a crazy experiment going on. We're going back to some vintage technology, and we're going to be installing Mac OS X Leopard on this PowerBook G4 right here. But wait, there's more! We're also going to be installing Final Cut Express HD. This is a version of Apple's Prosumer NLE from 2005. This is version 3 of Final Cut Express. And then... We're going to do a little experiment with the old video editing software. We're going to use this magical dongle <laughs> to transfer video from my new computer to this computer. And we're going to see what kind of videos this computer can handle in terms of rendering, playback performance, and everything. So basically, I'm taking this blank computer here and converting it into a Leopard-based video editing mobile workstation, let's just say. So that's the project. Let's see what happens. Wish me luck! Because I never have any. So here we have our Leopard DVD from the Mac box set. Remember when that was a thing? I'm just going to slide it in there. Okay, so now we're going to refresh the boot picker with the incredibly laggy cursor. Ah, just listen to that good old mechanical sound. Mac OS X install DVD. So when the watch goes away, we can uh, continue here. Any minute now. There we go. All right, click on that sucker, smash that arrow, and now we're booting into the DVD, which will take probably five minutes, but hey, I'm not going anywhere. Metaphorically and physically, my career is dead. It's okay, it's okay, I'm used to that. You spin me right around, baby, right around. This should be a super simple procedure. I've never done this combination of software installation before, at least recently. Plus transferring the videos and stuff. Oh, this should be fun. Let's read more information. Oh yeah. For more information about Mac OS X, visit this website, which is now way out of date. Customize. That's what I wanted to go for. So, X11 will keep on there. We don't really need the language translations. We don't need the printer drivers. I mean, look at that. You already save, what, over five gigs? So it's pretty nice. Turning those off just really speeds up the installation and really frees up some space. Okay, so I think that is everything. I'll smash done and boom, installing. And for fun, we're going to open up the log. Oh, checking installation DVD. If you want to save time, you can also smack spacebar on that and skip that sucker. We are now calculating the estimated time remaining. What, an hour? Oh, the, ooh, the bar's moving. What? That bar is moving pretty fast. Let's check the log here. Let's show all logs. Okay, so right now it's validating package payload. That's good. That is that a double entendre? Everything is if you try hard enough. So far this has been pretty smooth, which only means something is going to go catastrophically wrong when I least expect it, because again, I am cursed with that plague of bad IT luck. I don't know, we might have better luck today. And look at that, about 38 minutes remaining. It actually went from about an hour to 55 minutes to 46 minutes to 38 minutes in about a minute. Now, I know you guys can't see this because of the camera color balance, but the screen I'm looking at is actually kind of yellow. Now, is that just because the screen is really old? Or were these older PowerBooks kind of tingy yellow-ish just because of the design? Is that how it was back then? I don't remember it being quite so yellow. I think it's just because it's old. Even the Apple logo on the back looks kind of yellow. Now, I am a fan of Apple's new user interface look. That's not a problem. 
But part of me does miss the tranquility of the aqua water flowing through the progress bars as they crawled along. Anyone else feel that way? Yeah. Tranquil. Install succeeded! All right. Should we wait 22 seconds or should we hit the space bar? Hmm. I'm voting space bar. Woo! Rebooting now, Captain. Yeah! Okay, I'm gonna have to mute this part due to copyright. Uh, remember the good old days when Apple had intro videos? Yeah, those were the times. Wait a minute, what does that say up there? Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. I did that. If you know how to use voiceover, press command F5. I didn't ask for you! Mute. Stop. There we go. Anyway, check it out. Mobile me membership. Does anyone remember that? Oh my gosh. For those of you who are very young watching this video, which you probably shouldn't be, that is what iCloud was back in the day. That's like the pre-iCloud. iCloud. Yeah. Alright, so let's go through the setup assistant. We did it, guys. That was pretty simple. So now, the fun part. The next step is getting Final Cut Express HD on here. I do not have the other... Well, I don't easily have access to the other discs that came with Final Cut Express 3.0 back in the day, but at least we'll get the main disc installed. Alright, so let's take out the Leopard disc. Boop! You're done! Final Cut Express 3 going in. Reusing joke and inserting breakfast pastry. I used that in an old episode for those who don't know. You can click here to watch the series that joke was from right now. Shameless plug. Hashtag not a sponsor. Even though it's my own freaking show. Suck it. Fun fact, my first NLE was iMovie, as some of you may know. But that was more of a consumer program. The first prosumer video editor I've ever used was actually this version of Final Cut Express. Now I use Final Cut Pro 10 and Adobe Premiere, but aside from iMovie, back in the day, this is the software all of my video editing started on. This is how far back it goes. Oh no. Oh wait, I had the packaging. Ah, my serial number's on here. All right. Okay, I typed in the whole thing and the OK button is grayed out. Maybe it's case sensitive. Let's try that again. Okay, so this is a little concerning, even though after I enter in the serial number, the OK button is still grayed out. Now, I know I have installed this before. This is nothing new. So, I am a little concerned. I think I have a Final Cut Express 4 installer somewhere. That's probably lying around. That's another editor I used a lot back in the day. In fact, that was the editor I used the most before I switched to Final Cut Pro 10 when that came out. But really, Final Cut Express 4 is the same software, it's just one version newer. Well, we came into our first little road bump, and I am going to lose it. Oh, uh, that is really strange. I don't know why. Oh. 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 You probably can't read that. But the envelope says E-Frontier. That is not an Apple envelope. I'm actually pretty surprised with myself. I'm over here with my MacBook Pro back in the studio here. And I looked up an old document that hasn't been modified in three years. I used to store product keys in there. And sure enough, the first one in the list is Final Cut Express 3. Okay, I have four more digits left to enter. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, frick, it still didn't work. Okay. My guess is that serial key is probably not for Final Cut Express 3, but instead Final Cut Express 4. So we may need to switch version numbers if I can't find the packaging for 3. So I'm going to go digging around. Be right back. Alright ladies and gentlemen, I'm not going to waste time looking for the packaging. Instead I'm going to go through my discs. We'll start with that. Oh. Heh. <laughs> Almost forgot. And that. Oh wait, there's a little more. Got a little case. There we go. Oh wait, there's still more. 
Okay. All right, so let's go through all these. What else would I rather do on a Saturday afternoon? <laughs> Where's my scotch? Now, it has been a long time since I've gone through any of my discs, but if I recall correctly, I think the Final Cut Express 4 installer disc is somewhere in this case. So we're going to flip through all of them together. Whatever that is. Hey, look at that. Final Cut Express. Oh. Okay, I guess we're fucked now. It's on the floor. I'm not reaching down for it. Just kidding. Final Cut Express installer version 4.0 academic universal. Yes. That was something that had to be labeled back in the day because of PowerPC and Intel both being processor platforms that Apple had going for them at the time. Let's throw this in the G4, see what happens. Okay, so this file here says before you install Final Cut Express 4, but <laughs> we're not going to read that. Why? Because we're rebels. We're just going to go right to this. I've never really understood what that meant, but... I'm hitting yes. <laughs> Alright, so just a little bit of background here. Final Cut Express 4 was huge for the prosumer, high-end consumer area because this is when AVC HD support was introduced. So you know a lot of those hard disk based handy cams and stuff like that way back when? I mean, AVC HD is still new, but when this was a growing thing, especially for like consumer cameras, well, the ability to import that into Final Cut Express was a big deal. So that is pretty sweet. FX plug was also introduced, so that's another pretty big thing. Live Type 2, you know, before you had motion. The only way you could have motion before is if you had Final Cut Studio. I'm getting so freaking nostalgic here. All right, so we're going to try it again. Last four digits. Da, 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 da. You know, the continue button was always there. I wonder if I even needed to enter it. I guess it lets you enter it in later. Woohoo, we're done! All right, so we have Final Cut Express and Live Type. Live Type Media. Let's do it. 970 megs. Ooh, I don't know if I can swing that, bro. Install. All right, preparing for Final Cut Express. I think we overcame our road bumps. Thumbs up! Drinks all around. So just as a fun little tidbit, remember when Apple introduced the Retina display with the iPhone 4 during WWDC 2010? Remember the icon they used for it, the colorful iris? They really just hijacked it from the Final Cut Express logo clapboard. Yeah. Well, you know, reduce, reuse, recycle, I suppose. Guys, we're truly getting somewhere. Install succeeded. Bam. Oh gosh, the old pink iDisc logo. Remember that? Ooh. Final Cut Express 4. All right. Wow, that is a screen I have not seen in a long time. You know, I was trying to think when the last time I even used Final Cut Classic was. It's probably been years upon years. Profiling for RT Extreme. That's what it's doing right now. I just, I just can't wait to use my dongle. I can tell a lot of people are going to be using a lot of dongles when the new MacBook Pro comes out. Because unless you already have USB-C devices, either with USB or Thunderbolt 3, you're going to need a dongle to do just about everything. Say goodbye to MagSafe. <laughs> Say goodbye to SD card readers. <laughs> it's all going away. All right. Wow. This is bringing back so many freaking memories. Holy crap. You have no idea. So that's the basic way of doing green screening. It works pretty well. Um, like I said, the vari variables are what you use for your green screen, how much lighting you have. So, as you can see, this uh, image was actually pretty good. Seriously, as a video guy, you know, I've been doing video work for a long-ass time. Hundreds of the original videos that were on this channel, going years and years back, they were cutting this software. Man, oh man. It really was shit. Just kidding, at the time it was okay. It's pretty crazy seeing such different generations of technology next to each other, huh? Well, so here's the scoop. I'm going to transfer data from this computer via target disk mode through Thunderbolt. The Thunderbolt is going to adapt to FireWire 800, and this cable just happens to be FireWire 400, which this PowerBook supports. So it's coming from Thunderbolt, FW800, 
FW400. So that's what we're transferring through. And the data is also going to come off of a separate lossy uh, external Thunderbolt uh, SSD. So that will be fun. Let's just plug all this in here. The port is over. Excuse me. Gonna just stick it in. Oh, that was dirty. Okay. And I'm um, just going to scooch you over a little bit and then plug that into there. And let's plug the last C into there. And we'll just kind of shove you over. Just nice and comfortable like that. <laughs> All right. Um, and now I am going to boot this sucker into target disk mode. And if my calculations are correct, this drive and the internal drive here should mount onto this computer automatically. I've been wrong before, as we all know. So let's try it out. Don't go to sleep on me. Hey, it's 420. Woo! T! Hey, hey! I... Whoa. I have not seen that logo pop up in a long-ass time. And there we go. Would you like to use Windows to back up with Time Machine? That's an NTFS drive. That is probably not going to work. So we have Windows. Oh, that's it. That's a bit of a problem. That's weird. Why would the Windows partition of everything that's over here, why would the Windows partition show up? That's an NTFS drive. I mean, it can read, but it can't write. Kind of like a hillbilly, I guess. I don't know if a hillbilly can read. Just kidding. I'm a hillbilly. No, no, I'm not. But I can't read. Okay, so that is, um... That is strange. I wonder why that would happen besides the fact we are converting like 25 different interfaces. We may just have to do this the old-fashioned way. You know what I'm talking about. A pen drive. <laughs> Be right back. Actually, scratch the pen drive. I don't remember if that computer has USB 2 or not. It might. But regardless, Firewire will probably still be faster. So, I dug up this old iOmega hard drive, which has been infamously named the Flask Drive. And I'm going to see if this thing will work. And I can just plug in through Firewire 400 and adapt it through to 800 to Thunderbolt and see if I can mount it onto this computer. Let's try it out. Well, that's weird. My SSD just disconnected. I, I didn't even touch the computer. It's just a black magic cloud of cursed IT bad luck that keeps attacking me. Bullshit. I have not turned this thing on in forever, like my wife. So let's see if it even works, like my wife. External drive seven. All right, what is even on here? Nothing. Okay, cool. Copy. Firewire drive. Paste. You know, considering how old Firewire is, specifically 400, it's still pretty darn fast. Imagine having these nice speeds in the late 90s. It was a million times faster than USB. Almost done already. Pretty nice, huh? And ding. There we go. Also, that file transfer sound, that like twang sound, what is that supposed to be? Like, I've never figured it out. It's cool, it's been in the Mac forever, but what actually is that sound? Not a clue. Does anyone know? Okay, so it showed up. That's good. Let's do a cancel on that. External drive 7. Very nice. Uh, we could probably, you know, we probably don't even need to copy. We could probably just edit right off of here. Mm hmm Yeah, it's pretty laggy, but it actually reads the files, so that's a start. So let's just uh, plop all of that into the bin here. Oh yeah, that old film reel loading icon. Oh my gosh, I totally forgot that was a thing. Wow. <laughs> Nostalgia trip. Alright, so we're just going to keep this named Sequence 1 because we're badasses. Let's drag that shit down. Okay. So yeah, it is obviously unrendered. Even if I render it, I'm afraid I'm still not going to be able to play it back properly. But the cool thing is, it actually reads the files. So, that is a start. So right now, if I played this, it's going to give me that lovely thing. I could set it to unlimited RT, but I'm not going to. I, instead, am going to render that. Oh, it's not been saved. I'll just save it as unknown project. That's quite all right. <laughs> Writing video. That is, yet again, another dialogue box I have not seen in a long time, thankfully. Yeah, Fonica Pro 10, bitch. Doesn't need that anymore. I won't lie, though. It is pretty cool seeing one of my older videos inside of an older NLE on an older laptop. 
That is pretty swag. All right, so overall, it kind of worked. It is a little bit laggy, but it does support the video. Yeah, here it comes. Yeah, yeah, come on. There we go. Awesome frame rate. <laughs> Let's go backwards. Whoop. So anyway, yeah, that's pretty sweet. Lots of nostalgia there. So yeah, I guess you could use this as an editor for high resolution video. It'd be kind of slow. But if you have an old like Sony DV Handycam, you can import that stuff through Firewire and edit SD video right on here. It could probably handle that. In fact, I'm 90% sure it could handle that. All right, guys, I think we have a mission accomplished here. And as a celebratory send-off, enjoy this beautiful then and now comparison of these beautiful machines running Final Cut Express 4 and Final Cut Pro 10, Mac OS Sierra, and OS 10 Leopard. All right, guys, that's all I got now for Crazy Ken. Success, panties all around. I'll see you in the not too distant future. Stash time. Oh, oh, that hurt. That was, oh, that was not scripted. I kicked something. Oh, in fact, very little of this is scripted. Oh, okay. I hit something. Oh, medic. Hey guys, if you want to get some laughs out of us, I recommend Ken Cinema of Shenanigans. Just click here. But I also recommend Crazy Ken's Tech Misadventures. It is chuck full of tech mishaps and some fun times.